Good morning. It is Monday, June 11, 2012. New York Times. And in our ongoing coverage of the European Euro crisis, I'll wait till the trucks go by, and this is another free studio where I have to uh, allow for certain noises. Uh, it's important that we follow the Euro to try to understand what the problem is over there and how what the solution is. And it says Europe dodges a crisis in Spain but perils lurk. Greece is urgent issue. Concerns on fate of a bailout and nation's addiction to debt. Addiction to debt. Frankfurt with an agreement to bail out Spain's struggling banks, Europe again avoided financial chaos in a debt crisis that is in its third year. But Europe faces far bigger challenges that threaten the continent and with it the world economy. No joke, the world economy. The most urgent of those concerns is being driven by events in a country at the other edge of the Eurozone, Greece. Um, Greece, I was thinking the other day, that really the only answer to this is a world government where everybody spreads the wealth with everybody. But that'll never happen. But that is the answer. And one big world government that spreads where everybody's represented. That's what the United Nations, I think, was trying to be, but didn't stand a chance. It's very ineffective now, it seems. In a world government where Germany and the United States and Spain and and, and all the rich countries, not Spain. Spain's in trouble right now, but you know what I mean. Uh, their, their wealth is spread out amongst all the countries in the world, including Africa, including uh, the Philippines and places like that. Everybody's in it, but that, that will never happen. That's, that seems like an answer, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it can happen, but that's the answer. Anyway. The most urgent of those concerns is being driven by events in a country at the other edge of the Eurozone, Greece. Spain and Greece. While the Spanish banking rescue will be expensive as much as $125 billion, it will be well within the means of a European emergency fund established for just such purposes. Far harder to calculate are the costs if, after Greek elections next Sunday, the, the new government of Greece reneges on the bailout. Greece negotiated with its European lenders a few months ago. Far harder to calculate are the costs if, after Greek elections next Sunday, the new government reneges on the bailout Greece negotiated with its European lenders just a few months ago. No, we're not going to do it. Bye, see you later. Welcome to the drachma. That could lead to a withdrawal from the Eurozone, threatening that currency union, which has largely benefited more prosperous members like Germany. Yes, it has. And so the Germans don't like it, but they're going to have to do something about it. What is more, the Spanish bailout will do little to address Spanish European banks' addiction to borrowed money they have depended on for their daily financing needs. The way the currency union has been functioning is not sustainable, Jens Weidmann, the president of the German Bundesbank, told the Welt am Sonntag newspaper. A breakup of the currency union would bring extremely high costs and risks that no one can really predict. I'll bet nobody can predict. Lucas Papademos. Lucas Papademos, a former interim prime minister of Greece, said that Greece's departure from the Eurozone would be catastrophic, pushing inflation in the country to as high as 50%, putting extreme stress on Greek banks and slashing living standards if we leave the euro, if they leave the euro. Okay. The stakes are exceptionally high, said Mr. Papademos, who is also a former vice president of the European Central Bank. He told a group of bankers in Copenhagen last week, because the decisions to be made at and immediately after the forthcoming elections will determine the country's future for at least the next decade. Well, the next decade, those problems would not be Greece's alone. Europe's big fear is contagion and infection of financial panic that could spread far beyond Greece. Spain's leaders have long said Greece's problems contribute to the general market uncertainties that helped undermine Spanish banks. The Spanish are blaming it on the Greeks because they're so separate 
in that in all over Europe. They, the countries have such rivalries with each other, and they blame each other for the problems. And I understand different languages and everything. You'll probably notice a significant increase in detail as I'm going from one good camera from a bad camera. Oh, not a bad camera, but certainly not the same camera. But the battery runs out on this little guy. It's a JVC, and it's nice, but the battery runs out very quickly. Got to get a huge battery for it. Oh, yeah, here we are. Determine the country's future for at least, at least for the next decade. Yeah, well, that's true. These problems would not be Greece's alone. Europe's big fear is contagion, an infection of financial panic that could spread far beyond Greece. Spain's leaders have long said that Greece's problems contribute to the general market uncertainties that helped undermine Spanish banks. Well, and that's what I, yeah, that's where I was. And uh, Spain, all the European countries fighting with each other because they don't really feel like one country, and they're not. They're different countries. They've always been different countries. In a longer history, thousands of years. And now expecting them to pull together to save their currency. Well, that'd be a difficult one. Will they do it? Will they avoid war over this? This year is going to be a bad one. Oh, on Prime Mi on Sunday, Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy cautioned that the ailing Spanish economy, Europe's fourth largest, which has an unemployment rate of 25%, would worsen before getting better. This year is going to be a bad one, he said. And it may not end there with Italy struggling with economic stagnation and escalation and escalating borrowing costs. Hmm. A critical question will be how Saturday's deal will be received by investors on Monday, particularly with the Greek elections approaching. By no means is this a solution, said Adam Parker, chief United States equity strategist at Morgan Stanley. The aid for Spain could be a near-term positive from a trading standpoint, but you haven't solved anything in the long run, the next test, the long run. Right. The next task for European leaders is to show the rest of the world that they are making a credible effort to repair the flaws in the Eurozone that allowed the problems of one small country, Greece, to threaten the world economy. One small country, Greece, to threaten the world economy. On June 28th and 29th, European Union leaders will gather in Brussels to discuss, among other things, ways to forge closer fiscal integration, fiscal integration without having political integration. That ain't going to work. They know it, we know it, everybody knows it. Despite calls from some leaders for shared oversight of budgets and deficit spending, no concrete proposals have been made. In other words, everybody getting into everybody else's business like they do in the United States, but they're not going to do in Europe. No concrete proposals have been made, even if Greece ends up with a government willing to try to live up to the terms of its $130 billion Euro bailout deal by meeting its payments and striving to narrow its wide budget gap. Strong doubts remain whether any new leadership in Athens can fulfill those obligations. Well, especially if they don't collect taxes. I mean, I understand. I don't blame people for not wanting to pay taxes. Who wants to pay taxes? But, you know, you, if you want your government to work, you've got to pay taxes. But they don't want their, something they don't want. The Greeks have a, another way of doing things. Don't get me wrong. I love the Greeks. And those, all those sunny islands and the Greek thing and the Caspian Sea or whatever sea it is they go into. It's so beautiful. And all those islands. Who wants to pay taxes? Back to the drachma. Even in the case of a new government, I doubt whether the institutional framework in Greece can guarantee the program, said Jürgen Stark, a former member of the European Central Bank's executive board. Who has the competence to implement the program? That is the key point. Who has the competence to implement the program? That is the key point. Well, a lot of people do, but who can get it done? You know? Mr. Stark is among those who contend the Eurozone is strong enough to withstand a Greek departure. There will be contagion, he said in a telephone interview, but I think it can be managed. It will be costly in the short term. There will be benefits in the long term. Okay, so Greece is really thinking about leaving. What's it going to do to Greece? Well, Greece will need a lot of help, and they'll get it. Jitters about what Greek voters might do have helped soften statements from Germany, the Eurozone's paymaster. Oh, the Eurozone's paymaster. That's the truth in recent days. Although Berlin has been Greece's harshest economic critic, Germans awoke last Thursday to find Angela Merkel, their chancellor, telling them on television that Europe needed a fiscal union, implying that some of their tax dollars may be needed to help the suffering Spaniards and Greeks. Yeah, that's the way it happens in the United States. I've said this a thousand times. We all know it. 
the New York taxes go spreading around the country. We don't get back what we put into federal taxes. It goes elsewhere. We need more Europe, Miss Merkel said on ARD television. We need more Europe. Hmm. We do not only need a monetary union, but we also need a so-called fiscal union. This means that we also need a common budgetary policy, and we also need a political union. A political union. Angela Merkel has said it, ladies and gentlemen. Such a statement might have provoked an outcry a year ago. Ms. Merkel quickly played down the prospect of a big bang solution coming from the gathering on Brussels, but Germany may be realizing that their own well-being is in imminent danger. I do believe they're starting to see that this week. Official data will provide more clues about how the crisis is affecting Europe's largest countries. Figures on industrial production in France and Italy are expected Monday and for the Eurozone as a whole on Wednesday. Analysts have predicted declines, declines, which would be bad for Germany because Europe's biggest trading partners are other European countries. Mm -hmm. And they'd have to lower the price of Mercedes-Benz down to, you know, like Hyundai prices. And that would be terrible. But slower growth in Germany could also create a political backlash, making Germans more reluctant to help their stricken fellow Eurozone citizens. Right, I know. If people think they are poor, maybe they become more reluctant to share the burdens, said Clemens Fust, economics professor at Oxford University. Mr. Fust, F-U-E-S-T, Fust, Fust, Fust said he was skeptical that Europeans would ever agree to delegate control over their national budgets to a European authority as part of a fiscal union. See, that's what they said. Somebody knew this years ago when they started the Euro, that without budgetary control over all the countries, the Euro is going to be a mess. People said it, they knew it, and it is. I didn't know. I thought it was a great idea. But uh, economists knew it. Mr. Fuest said he was skeptical that Europeans would ever agree to delegate control over their national budgets to a European authority as part of a fiscal union. European leaders would be better off concentrating on measures that are more realistic, he said, like a common system for overseeing banks, guaranteeing deposits, and dealing with sick financial institutions. That could help avoid situations like those in Ireland, Cyprus, or now Spain, where the cost of bank rescues raises doubts about the solvency of the national government. Many proposals to push members of the European Union closer together would take years to carry out, too late to help ease the current tensions. Mario Draghi, the president of the European Central Bank, said just last week that it would help a lot if European leaders simply wrote a detailed plan for the future of the Eurozone. The fact of having an objective, a goal, an endpoint, and a clear path would by itself contribute to stabilization of the financial situation in Europe, Mr. Draghi said at a news conference. How much time he and other leaders have to chart such a path may depend on what Greek voters decide. The Greek government, when one is formed, must send a clear signal that is prepared to implement the reforms that have been agreed to, Mr. Weidman, the Bundesbank president, told Ard on Sunday. It's in the hands of the Greeks. It's in the hands of the Greeks. Oh, okay. I guess that's that. It's in the hands of the Greeks.